When I was a kid, um, I was one of those frustrating kids who was constantly asking his parents why. Um, it's not that I was rebellious or anything. I generally did as I was told, but um, I was constantly questioning absolutely everything. Uh, my parents would tell me to do something. I, it's not that I wouldn't do it, but I would just want to know why they wanted me to do it. Um, at the time, I thought my parents were totalitarians because they would just say, I don't care whether or not you understand why you have to do it. You have to do it. But in retrospect, they were probably far more tolerant than any child could reasonably expect. Uh, it's just um, when you have a child that is almost pathologically curious, um, it must drive you to distraction trying to deal with that child. Um, what makes oranges round, Dad? Uh, what? Uh, why is the sky blue, Mom? Um, how old are you, Mom? What does it mean to be, uh, you know, Mom or whatever? Uh, you know, constantly thinking along these lines. I wonder what it means to be my dad. You know, it must be crazy to live with such a child because he's constantly putting you as a parent or the other kids under a microscope all the time. It just, you know, you're you're just constantly observing absolutely everything around you because you're curious as to what the devil it all means. Well, okay, we all, we've all met kids like that. Um, they're frustrating, but usually people cut them a lot of slack because they say, well, that's a healthy sense of curiosity. Uh, it can lead to some pretty crazy situations, and it can lead you to want to throttle the kid from time to time, but um, generally it's a good thing when a kid is that curious. Well, <laughs> um, I was put into the Catholic school system uh, from the very beginning, from kindergarten all the way up to junior high school, and um, they tried to tell me all kinds of things about God and about Jesus and all this kind of thing. Now, Jesus is, a, is an interesting character because he sunk into the, to the way that I think. Uh, they generally did a fairly good job of selling this guy to me um, because to this day I sort of think, well, he, you know, he was a very good ethical and moral philosopher, etc. Uh, there was a lot of problems with what he said, uh, but um, generally I have a positive view of him. Um, and I would generally ask questions of my teachers, basically what he did or what he meant when he said this, that, or the other. They did their best again with uh, this irritating kid who just constantly had his hand up. Um, and uh, they also wanted to sell me ideas like God. Now, I wanted to understand what God was. Uh, what, what, what are you talking about here? Because my parents, ironically, had never really expressed any sort of views on the matter prior to putting me into school. Um, I think they were, they just assumed that such a, such a thing was real, and uh, that was that. They didn't have to tell me anything. It was just obvious, and um, we never went to church as a family or whatever, but I think that my parents believed in God. I'm not sure that in their later years they still did, but um, I think that they believed in it all, and they just didn't really see any need to instruct me in anything, and I think that they also understood what would happen if they tried to engage me in a, in a conversation of this nature. I'd drive them crazy. So the uh, religious teachers, the religious instructors in the Catholic school that I went to um, were forced to deal with me uh, in that context. Now, inevitably, when you've got a class full of kids, you've got practical matters at hand, and you have to essentially say, shut up. Um, I've gone as far as I can with you. you you're not getting it. Um, and now your questions are getting disruptive. Um, I am an, actually an extremely disruptive, disruptive person uh, right up to the present day. Um, I'm not too worried about upsetting any apple carts at all, ever. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, but they tried for, I would say, a good 12, no, no, not quite so many, uh, 8, 9, 10 of my most formative years to tell me what God was. We would sing about God in songs. Uh, we would talk about God in religion class, which was essentially religious instruction, um, religious indoctrination. And we would um, constantly talk about things, God is imminent, transcendent, and all this kind of thing. And ultimately, I simply, um, my questions ran off the map. Whatever maps anyone had to use to instruct me in this, uh, was never adequate because I would ask every question about that, that one could imagine about God. Now it wasn't as if I didn't understand this sort of thing intuitively, but you know, again, when you're 
almost insanely curious, which I still am, um, explanations are never enough because explanations have to be based upon assumptions and assumptions can always be questioned and you end up in a situation of infinite regression. Now, infinite regression troubled me probably for a good 10 years in my teens and 20s, but I think that I've figured it out or at least worked it out in this crazy brain of mine um, how to sort of face that. Um, and it's led to other uh, questionings and uh, my musings, but here I want to talk about God and how the fact, how that, um, how this idea has suffused my entire life. Um, a lot of people have attempted to explain this to me, and it, it never really worked. Um, I noticed that in this series that I'm making, the theists, the theists, uh, as, as if they're an identifiable group, haven't really sort of sprang up and said, aha, I, I like what this guy is saying, because there's an assumption in the tail end of everything that I say. I'm saying that atheism is meaningless because theism is meaningless. Um, you can't say you don't believe in God when you can't tell me what God is. So I think that the theists, if we can use such a term, um, are sort of, they understand that what I'm saying is, I'm saying that um, atheism might be a word that doesn't do it for me because theism in my way of seeing things, is an essentially meaningless term. Um, I often think that people who self-describe as theists haven't got the slightest idea, the slightest even emotional grasp of the implications of that idea <laughs> uh, of God. Do you understand what it is that you're talking about? What what that means when you say there's a God out there. Um, or I shouldn't say what it actually means, but you understand what some of the implications could be. It's enough to blast your brains out when you try and actually wrap your head around it. And I, I, again, I simply, I can't wrap my head around it no matter how hard I try. Um, I don't think one can wrap one's head around it, but I, again, I, I don't know because I can't get into other people's heads, but I've never stopped thinking about the whole idea. Um, so atheists might take umbrage at what I'm saying when I say why I'm not an atheist. Well, um, I assure you, <laughs> uh, theists are actually, even though I'm spending most of my hot air on, on atheists, theists are actually getting it even worse. Because I'm essentially saying that people who start talking to me about God um, either A, don't know what they're talking about, or B, haven't thought it through, uh, because uh, there's no way you can actually communicate that from one person to another. Um, and uh, the fact that I, I'm not an atheist is even doubly true in terms of being a theist. How can I be a theist when, when God is so completely devoid of coherence, uh, completely devoid of encapsulatable, uh, encapsulable meaning. How can you grasp what God is? Um, how can you, and most of all, how can you get somebody else to grasp what God is? Um, kind of unrelated, but in a way a little bit related. This is why I think that um, blasphemy of one form or another um, was always necessary to deal with people who ask too many questions. To this day, it's, ne it's needed uh, when you're instructing people in religion. As in Catholic school, when the teachers just said, okay, I understand that I can't satisfy you with my answers. Be quiet, or you're kicked out of the class. And I did get kicked out of the class. Didn't even bother me. Didn't stop me thinking. Um, but again, that is the Achilles heel, is people, is, is the, the fact that people who never stop questioning these sorts of things. And the only way that you can actually get people to accept the idea and move on from there, now this is the sticking point, deal with it and to move on is something I simply can't do. <laughs> I can't just sort of work it out in my head. So this is why I think that blasphemy in one form or another is backing up just about any ism. Blasphemy is just as powerful an idea in the atheist discourse as it is in the theist discourse as it is in any discourse. Um, there are basic core tenets that you have to accept even if you can't explain them. I, I haven't gotten anyone uh, to explain to me what God is in order to say what it is that you disbelieve if you're an atheist. Um, again, 
um, disbelieving what the theist believes is impossible because the theist can't explain his own beliefs. Um, you think I'm being hard on atheists? Just read between the lines and um, I'm being doubly hard, I guess, on theists. Um, neither one really does it for me. Curiosity pretty much trumps everything. Thank you.